It's amazing to be here. By the way, they hosted our our board retreat in January, and we had the chance to actually see like the awesome. Did you say something about the lounge downstairs? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, you did. Okay, so I would actually recommend after this <laughs> event ends, if you disperse, check it out. It's like a really awesome space. I yeah. love that space. Yeah, thank you. Um, so also, um, we work hard to make sure this event stays free to everybody who can attend. Uh, that said, it's free to you. It is not a free event to execute. Who makes that possible is um, our sponsor, Wells Fargo. So we'll, after the helicopter goes over, <laughs> we'll give them a brief chance to uh, say a few words. So Jesse, would you mind saying a few words? Hey guys, so uh, my name is Jesse Pendergraft. I'm a business banking specialist with Wells Fargo at our DeSoto branch at PN14. I'm also the events chair for our Pride Team member network. Um, thank you to the Graham for hosting us, and thank you for the CLGCC. C A L G C C. <laughs> Can't talk today. Sorry, brain has gone Just somewhere else. Working on it. Chamber. Um, you know, we're working on rebranding. We're working on rebuilding our name. I'm sure you guys have all heard the commercials about how we've reestablished in 2018. <laughs> Here we go. We got a few chuckles. That's good. Uh, <laughs> so uh, this is part of that, and this is what we're working on rebuilding our brand with. If you guys have suggestions, if you guys have comments, if you guys have other networks that we could possibly help out with, please let me know. I'd be happy to help and get those words out to whomever they need to be with. Um, I know that we're working with the Wanda Olson Foundation. It's uh, in progress. Unfortunately, there's a lot of red tape that goes through with that, but um, it's up and coming, so uh, keep a word out, or keep an ear out, and we will be with you guys shortly. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And we actually do have um, a guest speaker today who's going to take us say a few brief remarks. So if you all recall, the anniversary of the uh, Pulse shooting was recently, what happened um, just a couple months ago, I guess. And um, we had the opportunity to send some of our board members there to, uh, to talk about that into Virginia. And uh, we actually have Virginia Senator Eben here that uh, was there. And actually, I think you were at the same meeting, right? And um, he you know, enjoyed meeting our board members and just wanted to take a chance to say a few words to this group. So Senator Eben, if you wouldn't mind. Please. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Senator. Um, the, you know, uh, Van told me that the people in the back who come closest are going to get a hundred dollar bill out yeah. of his pocket. <laughs> so you come forward a little bit. Come a little bit closer. Come on. Come on come forward. On. I see in the glasses in the back. Come up. Um, but I, I wanted to thank uh, Van for having me. And um, everyone always. I'm going to talk about three things. I'm going to talk about the Virginia General Assembly, tourism, and the Virginia economy and politics uh, briefly. Uh, but. People always say, where do you represent? So they don't know where the 30th district is, and I didn't know before I got elected. Uh, <laughs> it includes, uh, on the Potomac River, the uh, Crystal City National Airport, Old Town, Mount Vernon Estate, and Fort Belvoir, and, and 200,000 people west of there. So it's kind of like Georgetown, except we get two US senators. I'm sorry that, to put it that way. But um, I'm, I'm the first uh, openly gay member of the General Assembly. And I got elected in 2003, and when I got elected and, and sworn in in 2004, it was kind of an older Virginia, more of the Virginia you might have expected back then of uh, one that had all kinds of anti-gay legislation, whether it was proposals to prohibit marriage equality in our Constitution, or outlaw gay and lesbian adoption, which never passed, or limit gay-straight alliances, with, which never passed. Um, that was kind of what I walked into. But now, if we flash forward 15 years later, we're in a, really in a new Virginia. Uh, this past legislative session was the first one I can remember that there was no, no anti-gay legislation, and in fact, more positive pro-gay legislation than ever before. We went from having one gay legislator to having a five-member caucus of openly LGBT people. We have our first lesbian member and a first transgender legislator in America, Donica Rome. So we've really made great advances and, and are much more diverse. Uh, we've had not just uh, negative legislation that we had to deal with in the past, we've got positive legislation that's moving forward. In the Senate that I now serve in, we had non-discrimination in government uh, employment as well as housing, non-discrimination in housing legislation that passed the Virginia Senate 29 to 10. That means that we had Republicans and conservative Republicans vote for it. So that's a big step forward. Now we just need to bring the House of Delegates along, which um, is our project for next year. 
we had the Virginia Code Commission, which deals with proposals to change Virginia law, recommend unanimously uh, removing statutory and constitutional prohibitions on, um, on uh, marriage equality. And we've not, made, not only made progress legislatively, but in terms of business or the state, we've got uh, Virginia's for Lovers. Who, who's heard of that before, the, the, our tour slogan? Okay. So that's been more than a 40-year-old slogan. And former Governor McAuliffe appointed an LGBT tourism advisory commission. And now we're the first state in the country that has an effort to market Virginia as an LGBT tourism destination. You've got a lot of cities, but not a state, except for Virginia. And um, I wanted to show you our logo, which you may recognize with the red heart, but now it's got a rainbow heart. So what I did, wow. uh, not, not permanently for everything, but this is for the LGBT component. And I wanted to give Van a hat, and I wanted to give Morgan a hat. Um, and on, our, on our official website, I'm we don't want to mess up your hair, but it's okay. You got to adjust the size of this. Um, on our on our website uh, for Virginia uh, tourism, you'll find uh, an LGBT tourism uh, vacation destination page, and we list businesses that are LGBT friendly and welcoming that want to particularly capture that market. So, you if you have a business in Virginia and you want to be listed, uh, we can do that. In fact, uh, one of my legislative aides, Henry Watkins, is here, and Henry can help you um, do that if you see him later. Then uh, our economy, you know, we're business people here, and Virginia's got a strong and diversifying economy every day. We've been relying on the federal government and the military for uh, a lot of our jobs. We have a low 3.2% unemployment rate and a AAA bond rating, which is a big deal. But workforce development is how we're diversifying our economy. In uh, Virginia, we have 60,000 unfilled cyber jobs. So if anyone here is a cyber expert and you want to move across the river or work across the river, we'd love to have you. If you're not a cyber expert yet, we're, we're doing workforce <laughs> development, so we'll, we'll get you qualified. But our, um, as our governor likes to say, our doors are open, our lights are on for everyone, regardless of who you are. And uh, that's one of the reasons that Amazon is eyeing Virginia, or three sites in Virginia, for their HQ2, including two in our 30th district in Crystal City and in Potomac Yard. So we're, we're hopeful that um, not just Amazon, but that lots of businesses will continue to recognize our climate. And um, I wouldn't be a good politician in an election year without at least mentioning politics. I know this is a nonpartisan group, so I won't be too partisan. But just historically, I'll say, in 2017, uh, Virginia Democrats flipped uh, 14 seats in the Virginia House of Delegates. 14 bringing uh, the House almost to, to parity. Uh, if not for um, a um, draw of a, from a punch bowl in a tied election, it would have been 50-50. <laughs> yeah. right. uh, so we're going to work to change that. And really, uh, the Trump-Pence anti-gay agenda, that's where we saw the first really re reaction to it electorally. And this year, there are three more congressional seats or more that are in play in Virginia. And next year, 2019, is the year that uh, Virginia Senate and House are both up for election. In the Senate that I serve in, we only need one more seat for Democrats to control. In the House, two seats. And if we, we get there with our Democratic governor, we will ensure legal protections for our community. So that's kind of what the stakes are. But I just really wanted to um, give you that brief report. Thank you for your leadership for your economic stewardship, and for your dedication to our community. And, and thanks for having me speak. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.